So you guys really liked the last time I tried to make a mechanical Lego clock, even though it only lasted for 3 minutes. So it's time to improve that. And today, I have a few tricks on my sleeve, so let's just get straight into it. I have 3 goals for this build. The first is for it to be accurate. After all, clocks are supposed to tell the exact time. Secondly, is for it to last a long time. Maybe at least half an hour. And lastly, my last clock only had one hand, so today, I'm gonna step it up to two hands. And if I can meet all these goals by the end of this video, I'll be happy. But will I even be able to do that? I guess we have to find out. But for now, you can sit back and enjoy the video. Wait, but what did I just build? I have some explaining to do. So now I need to make the escapement mechanism. So the way we're gonna do this is, is with something that will oscillate at a certain frequency. This clock is gonna use a pendulum, just like a grandfather clock. The idea is we can use a pendulum to make the clock more accurate because we know how long it takes for a pendulum to swing back and forth. This gear is only able to rotate in one direction. So what we want to do is have the pendulum lift this ratchet, allow the gear to rotate one tooth, and then the ratchet lowers back again. So if you so after a lot of experimentation, this seems to work well enough. As you can see, when the pendulum moves, the ratchet gets lifted, and the gear pushes the pendulum and ratchet back. And this is lined up pretty well in its neutral position. And we can attach it to the actual pendulum later. So now that we figured that out, Wait, but what is that weird spinny thing I just made? It's that time of the video again. Start with the clock hands mechanism. Well, if we have two different clock hands, this is the minute hand and this is the hour hand, and we want them to both rotate at different speeds in, on the same axle, I don't know if that's even possible, but let's try it. Okay, so my first candidate is this weird gear piece, and you could probably put it here and have it rotate like this. You could have an axle running through the middle, and you could also have this gear, which is attached to this other hand somehow. But it's quite bulky, so I'm gonna keep looking for some more options. So this piece seems to be another candidate. If I put an axle through it, you can see that these can both rotate individually. But the problem is, how do I attach this? And second of all, how do I actually get it to rotate? And I actually have one of these special gears, and this mechanism seems to work since it's based on the fact that this piece sticks a tiny bit further out than the base. So these stick nicely in and it rotates with it. It's gonna have to be a bit lopsided, but it should be good enough. And we can still insert and rotate freely a large axle. So the next step is figuring out how to attach the hand. And I could just do another friction fit mechanism, but for aesthetic purposes, I'm just gonna attach this with a bit of blue tack. And there we go, you can see that these hands can now individually rotate. This one has a bit more friction, which is a little bit concerning, but I'll fix it up later.
Okay, what is that weird gear looking piece? Next priority is to separate these hands by making them move at different speeds obviously and all I need to do is make it so that every time this hand rotates 60 times this hand rotates one time. So that's a pretty big gear down but first we need to gear this away. This can move a lot so I'm also going to attach this axle through a hole that keeps it in place. It's working. So. What I want to do is figure out how I'm going to gear this down by 1 60th and in a small amount of space. And we have our solution which is this worm gear. So I'm just going to do a quick 1 to 1 gear ratio. Now all I need to do is connect a 12 tooth gear to here and connect it to this axle with a 5 to 1 gear ratio. I was right. So now we should have the hand mechanism working. As you can see, the other hand moves slowly. You can tell that these hands are accurate to each other. And although it was going to be a minute and hour hand, I decided to make it a second and minute hand because this clock was probably only going to last an hour. Circle. Wow, that is not the center. This is where our chain is going to go. And this is where our pendulum pole is. Let's use a bit of blue tack to hold it in place. Now it's basically perfect. And okay, now that that's attached, I can start moving on to the last part, which is gonna be the weights and the pendulum. Okay, for the pendulum, I'm just gonna use two of these wheel pieces. I'm gonna get a bunch of these pieces and attach them to here until I have the right length um, so that the pendulum oscillates exactly one second. So here's one two and let's just start with three there we go and let's see how long it takes to oscillate so it's a bit fast and that's a lot closer add just a tiny little bit more and that's pretty much perfect so now i've just realized the problem which is that pendulum naturally leans a little bit this way so what we're going to do is we're going to attach a little piece like so and just offset the weight by a tiny little bit and there we go so the next step is to attach the weight and I'm going to use some of these chain link pieces. So we're going to just thread them through first. We have successfully threaded it through. And now it is time to attach our weight. Use a drink bottle. Ta-da! Water's adjustable. And now we can attach it. It seems to be not enough weight. Maybe the pendulum isn't heavy enough. The tire that's supposed to be on this element. I'm just only going to put the front tire on. These are under a lot of stress, but the ticking sound is much louder and it appears that it works. Okay, let's just see how long it can actually run for. I'm going to reset the weight and then leave it to run. Then we can work on some polishing. 
Okay, the time according to this clock, about half past. So let's see with this unpolished pendulum, how long it actually runs for. While we're here, it's probably a good time to say, if you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe. It'll really help push this video with the YouTube algorithm. And this video took a while, so it would be worth it. Okay, so I think the clock's almost done. As you can see, the weight is pretty much on the floor. And it's been about exactly one hour since we started this. According to the clock that is. So I would say this is a success. So there we go, the clock has finished. And now all we need to do is tweak the pendulum. Okay, so the last adjustment I need to do is to make this pendulum a tiny bit longer because it was running a bit too fast. So we're just gonna place it with a slightly longer piece, plug it in, and let's see if this is the right timing. Okay, let's wait till this is at the top. Five, fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty. So it's pretty much perfect. The last thing we're going to do is add another layer of cardboard. There we go. And I think it's finally time to cue the montage. <laughs> 